Hello, I'm Kelly Morgan, Ambassador of the Inner State, the state that you enter when you do what you really love. And I'm really privileged today to be here with Dr. John Du Martini, who's the godfather of the project. Hello, John. Hi. Hi. So John is a human behavioral specialist, and he has been researching and te teaching since 1982. 72. Since 72. Yeah. Um, John travels the world 360 days a year teaching and sharing his service to the world and that is a great demonstration of living from your life purpose doing what you love is that right yes I, I love uh, I love researching writing traveling and teaching that's pretty well I do every day great so my first question John is what is a life purpose what's a life purpose well it's something that you feel deep inside something you want to dedicate your life to each person that has something that's unique that they want to express. Um, some people may want to ra raise a beautiful family. Rose Kennedy from the Kennedy family had her mission statement was, I dedicate my life to raising a family of world leaders. Some people could be like Bill Gates, making a difference in the world with IT and technology and software development. And that's their mission. Or maybe their charity foundation. Some people may want to be a great gold medalist we had two of our gold medalists in uh, Australia recently, and they're totally focused on pole vaulting and high jumping, and that's their mission. Um, mine is teaching. Other people may have social causes. Some people could have physical fitness. Some people may have um, health areas. Some may be spiritual causes. But whatever that they feel in their highest values that's most meaningful, most inspiring, most fulfilling, that they want to dedicate their life to, that's a mission. That's a, that's a purpose for their life. And so is it true, does everyone have a life purpose then? Because I know some people feel they don't. So is it true that everyone does? Well, whether you're conscious of it or not, your life is demonstrating that you're committed to something. And some people, because they compare themselves to other people and not compare their own daily actions to their own dreams, they may be subordinating to the influence of other people and clouding the clarity of what they are actually demonstrating in their life to be committed to. So everyone has something that is highest on their value that they're inspired by and committed to. But they may not have actually formally uh, structured it into what is called a mission statement or a purpose statement. But we're all dedicated to what's most important to us, most valuable. The ancient Greeks said that the highest value of any individual is the purpose and most meaningful thing they can dedicate your life to. Okay, thank you. And just in your teachings, I've been to a few of your seminars and I've noticed that you do refer to the greats like the great thinkers such as Aristotle. And I know that I've heard you say about the Greek philosophers that they say a, a saying which is any structure that does not follow its purpose self-destructs. Is, is that true for humanity as well? Well, <clears throat> an individual has a set of values, a set of priorities that they live their life by. Whenever they're living their life by the highest priority, uh, the blood glucose and oxygen goes into the executive center of the brain. There they have inspired vision, strategic planning, a desire to execute the plans, and more self-governance and more order over their physiology. So those individuals that live congruently with what they really value in life are more likely to be masters of their destiny instead of victims of their history. And they're more likely to be organized instead of disorganized. And as a result of it, instead of having entropy, which ages us and causes the, the decay, we're having negentropy or life physics instead of death physics. So in a sense, if you're not fulfilling your purpose, you're partly self-destructing. And the self-destruction is a feedback mechanism to guide us back to go back to priority and to fulfill what's most meaningful to us. Wow, wow, that's huge. And so then on the other hand, when you do what you love, um, we say that you enter a state called the inner state. Can you tell us more about that state, like physiologically, mentally? What does that state look like? What are the symptoms, the good symptoms of that state? Well, anytime you're living by what your highest value is, you're living congruently and authentically according to what's most meaningful and inspiring to you. Um, you are willing to pursue challenges that inspire you. And no matter what you do, you're going to have challenges in life. But if you fill your day with challenges that inspire you, you don't attract challenges that don't. You're not likely to have to deal with those every day because you're too busy filling your life with things that are important. So what happens is you create you stress instead of distress. And use stress is wellness promoting. And you're physiologically bringing more homeostasis. And you have more of a balance in your autonomic function and self-physiology. 
and your epigenetics is more balanced. But if you're doing something that's not inspiring and you're unfulfilled, you go into the amygdala area of the brain, which is avoiding pain, seeking pleasure, and striving for a one-sided life instead of embracing both sides of life. And the more you strive for a one-sided life and have an impulse for only hedonistic pursuits, immediate gratification, impulsive, compulsive, addictive type of behavior, the more you attract challenges that you don't want uh, to help you grow, actually, but you don't see it that way. So you have distress, and you uh, then are going to go entropy and breakdown. So it's very important if you want to access that inner state uh, where we're intrinsically um, called from within uh, instead of having to be motivated externally, extrinsically, from the outer state. See, people who live by their highest values are inner driven and have a calling from within. People who live according to other people's values and their own lower values, they have to be motivated from out. So the inner state is a person who's authentically living congruently according to what they really value. They're in the, the zone, they're on time, on target, in tune with their mission in life, and they feel grateful and feels that things are on the way, not in the way. And therefore they have more wellness factors instead of promoting illness factors. Thank you. And I've noticed a few people, um, when they have injected other people's values, when you start to talk to them about their values, they don't really know what those values are because they're not used to asking themselves those questions. What advice would you give to those people that I guess feel a bit lost and are not sure what's their values, their true values, and what's injected? Well, whenever they hear themselves internally saying, I should, I ought to, I supposed to, I got to, I have to, I must, which are imperative injunctions of outer authorities inside their head, it's not them. It's somebody that they're subordinating to that they're trying to please. And there's nothing wrong with helping people, but doing something that is meaningful and inspiring to you and then mastering the skill of articulating it in a way where other people win out of it is way more fulfilling. So if you hear yourself saying, oh, I'm inspired by it, I love doing it, it's what I can't wait to get up in the morning and do, and your life is demonstrating spontaneous inspiration to go do something, that's a sign that you're being congruent. Nobody has to get me up uh, and research, write, travel, teach. It's something I've been doing since 1972, 73. Now, what's interesting, as I was with uh, in, in Melbourne, Australia the other day, and we had a pole vaulter and a, um, a um, high jumper there. They're medalist. And I asked the pole vaulter in the room, we had about 80 people there, and we had, uh, at a, I was doing the Breakthrough Experience program, my signature program I do. And um, the pole vaulter, I asked her just out of curiosity, does anybody have to ever remind you to get up and do your pole vaulting? She goes, absolutely not. I said, is that what you think about, visualize, talk about, firm, inspired by? Is that what everything you're putting your heart is into? He says, that's my life. I'm here to master the pole vaulting. I said, that's a mission and that's something that's intrinsic. You don't ever need motivation, incentives, or reminding from the outside when you're living authentically from the inside. Brilliant, thank you. And can I ask you, what inspired you to say yes to being the godfather of the project for the inner state? Well, i known uh, yourself and Nicholas and uh, Nicola and I, I, uh, I basically uh, have known that they're dedicated, both of you are dedicated to a cause, and it's a great cause, and it's trying to help people from within live authentically without, which creates a chain reaction in a society to assist people in living a way that I think everybody in society was hoping for. Uh, living authentically. When we give ourselves permission to be authentic and more poised and have more equanimity, we exemplify what's possible for human beings. And what does, it causes a chain reaction because innately there's a yearning for all human beings to want to live that way. Mm -hmm. So if we are demonstrating that, we create a chain reaction and draw magnetically people towards that objective because if they see it exemplified, which is the greatest teacher, they have a higher probability of incorporating their life and causing a chain reaction that could help society. Great, thank you. Um, I just want to check something with you because I know you've researched hugely and you really know a lot about the ancient civilizations all the way throughout history. I want to ask you, in the past known history, do you know of any civilization that's lived from helping each person find their life purpose and live from it? Well, I can't say that I, I can claim a civilization's done that, but there's certainly been great leaders who have led the civilizations that have worked their life according to what they value most. Um, we, we have a history of great leaders in time. We have, we have 
uh, dictators and we have monarchs and we have um, leaders of democracies. We have all different types of social structures. And each of those have a place and they're needed based on the type of people we have in society. But there's always, uh, in almost every country, there's somebody that stands out as a great example of somebody that was willing to pursue what was deeply meaningful to them and make a difference. See, if we subordinate to the world around us and we inject the values of everybody else into our life and we cloud the clarity of our own purpose and we live vicariously through other people in their shadows and not on the shoulders of giants, we are not able to be the most unique person where we make the greatest difference. So the people that really make a difference in the world that change the course of history are the people that stood authentically with a new and innovative and original idea that serves humanity, that eventually oversees more effectively and efficiently the old paradigms and traditions, conventions that have been stagnant. So somebody who does do that, they leave their mark usually. They're usually polymaths of, of different fields. That's what I've noticed. They're usually well, well lateral thinking, so they're not stuck in a tradition uh, and only one way of thinking. They're usually they're th coming from a different angle. That's what makes them stand out. Thank you, thank you. And then I just want to ask you, is there anything special you'd like to say, anything additional that you'd like to add to our nice little chat here that you think I haven't covered off? Well, uh, no matter who you are that may be listening to this, um, if you look carefully and honestly and integrally about what your life demonstrates, your life, your decisions that you make in life is based on what you value most. Every decision is based on what you believe is gonna give you the greatest advantage or disadvantage to what you value most. And um, you have control over your perceptions, decisions, and actions. And if you look carefully, look at what your life is demonstrating. Ask yourself, what is it that I do spontaneously every day that inspires me, that I can't wait to get up in the morning and do? And start to prioritize your life according to what's really valuable to you. If you live and fill your day with high priority actions that inspire you, you, the day doesn't fill up with low priority distractions that don't. If you pursue challenges that can make a difference in the world that inspire you, you're less likely to attract challenges around you that don't. So if you give yourself permission to live authentically according to what you really value, you're more likely to magnetize opportunity to you, achieve more empowered and expanded opportunities and achievements, and you're greater have a wellness quotient. In fact, all seven areas of your life, your inspiration, your mind development, your career development, your financial development, your family development, your social development, and your health, all are empowered and enhanced by living integrally and authentically according to the inner state in your life instead of the outer world. Let the voice and the vision on the inside be greater than all opinions and ideas on the outside if you want to master your life. Wow, thank you. That is so beautiful. So I just want to thank you for your time today, John. I know you've taken time out of your busy schedule to be with us. And I want to invite everyone here that's been watching this video to have a look at www.theinnerstate.global. There you can go and build your profile where you can write up your life purpose and start building that life without regrets. So thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.